Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the True Church of Jesus Christ with His Latter Day Saint, and we are sitting and spinning this wheel. Now, I know in the regular churches you're not going to get taught this specific teaching, but from now on, I think I'm going to use this diagram because this diagram sufficiently depicts where men fell into, and not only that, but how to get out. You see, men have been confused because of this wheel and because of recent knowledge that. Well, it's not recent knowledge. What basically one and number two represent is being stuck in this wheel. And number two is devotional service to God. So that entangles us or disentangles us immediately out of life or the wheel of Satan as well too. Because that's where man fell into. He fell into this false ego. That's why this is known more as the false ego, darkness. And this right here, number one, is the three modes of material nature. But behind good passions and ignorance, there's these three animals. So the Buddhists have upgraded that teaching to anger, hatred, and greed. So that's what's behind the psyche when the false ego or the souls come into this world. This is basically the false ego or Satan, and then the three modes of nature and men occupy themselves with just uh, either these traits uh, that's you could say like religious life or work life the second one is marriage the third one is scholarship right here with that gentleman and the fourth one there is religious life so those are the four societal caste systems that you could say the supreme lord made back in the day and men behind basically good passions and ignorance eating off of that tree right now they're under the false ego and darkness. So as soon as one gets incarnated into this material world, this is exactly the depiction of what's going on behind the nature illusion. So behind the trees, behind the plants, see right here, these are the human beings, right? They are all in this wheel, but behind the nature illusion are these actions of life. And the outer wheel is how like the, we have our human society or the human makeup of consciousness so we see there's a gentleman and a woman getting served tea here I'm not quite sure what these mean there but these are the 12 you could say signs of the zodiac and the 12 or aspects of human consciousness or human living but as you can see see there's uh, adult you know, there's sex life there's uh, one embarking on journeys here too, there's just your chilling. <laughs> I'm not too familiar with the outer wheel, but I, at least the interpretations of this wheel itself. But what, from what I taught, it's basically the zodiacal life there. And but you can see, the zodiacal life makes up the human affairs, and then the inner wheel here too. Or you could say, <laughs> it's a wheel, right? So what spins what? This inner forms the outer and this outer forms even more of the outer or does this outer form the inner and so on <laughs> you know does it go outward or does it go inward and that's another thing you could study yourself too because that's also a part of the material illusion these are all depictions let's say of following human acts and we'll get more into uh, the Bhagavad Gita I'll read a chapter uh, chapter 7 which details that you don't want to work in one three and four so that's the basically the conditioned souls the people that don't embrace the truth that don't embrace god see people that are devotees to the lord they're not even in this wheel they're liberated souls as you could say so that's the object of following god's religion getting the light that enlightens all men is becoming a liberated soul and actually chilling up there at number two so here's how we do it. Remember, Matthew chapter 10. Do not suppose that my mission on earth is to spread peace. My mission is to not spread peace, but division. I've come to set man at odds with his father, daughter with her mother, daughter-in-law with her mother-in-law. In short, to make man's enemies those of his own household. So that's why there's a lot of strife here. It's not just this wheel right, of good and evil that man spins when he ate the apple now. See, that one can turn into two if you devote yourself to the one consciousness principle. So that's more about uh, impersonalization. 
that's what that word means is understanding that there's one consciousness so that's why when you're born you can get taught the one consciousness principle and be liberated almost immediately so scholars recent scholars did not understand why this Buddha was placed outside the wheel that's because they're fools they don't, they don't know anything about enlightenment whatsoever anything about God consciousness so when God removes the veil this is where Adam fell into he fell into material darkness the coverings of the false ego in the flesh that's the tonic of flesh and that's basically number one so his consciousness is full of anger uh, envy and greed so that's what the animals represent and then he sows into the material good and then the material evil is represented here by three people in a rope and that one pig is pulling these three uh, effects of life in servitude you see even there's a bondage in marriage bondage in education bondage in religion there's bondage in all four of these acts that are in number three that's why the counter effect is this servitude or slavery but if you devote yourself to the one consciousness principle right this is more like the roots of the tree so all the people in material creation think that they're all individual people that's basically Satan here this false ego that's what the false ego means they're not practicing the one consciousness principle are they so that's why there's division and not only that but the master's mission is to bring us back into his word so Matthew chapter 6 don't take thought so that one turns not only see now we build love faith and hope into what into number two which brings us out of this material uh, concoction you could say and here's another thing too even though Satan you can see here with his hands he's spinning the wheel God is the controller anyways he controls all things God is the cause of all causes so God is the controller of Satan but Satan has just been given dominion as it says in the Quran and I'll read that shortly when Satan fell he also fell with Adam and has been given dominion over a certain amount of time so that's the 5,500 years of judgment that is what basically the control of man is for that amount of time but Christ already performed that mission 2,000 years ago of freeing Adam from Satan as well Satan's already been overcome that's why number one turns into number two <laughs> because the process of devotional service to the Lord all of this is already overcome in the beginning see in the beginning the lamb was already slain and crucified and resurrected that happened 2,000 years ago but as it says in scripture the lamb is already slain the foundation of the world so that's why number one turns into number two and you could have God consciousness very easily if you just follow the way so that's why his mission on earth is not to entangle you in the material modes of nature in the fret and into the, the human society see this this mission is to get you out of this wheel to get you enlightened that's why there's the Sun there enlightenment <laughs> so he's an enlightened one right so he who will not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy he who seeks only himself brings himself to ruin where he who only brings himself to nothing discovers who he really is so that's also the process of self-realization and practicing the one consciousness principle remember uh, uh, this is now Matthew 11 verse 25 on one occasion Lord Father of heaven and earth I offer you praise for what you've hidden from the learned and the clever you've just revealed to the merest children father it's true you've granted and you graciously will this so everything has been given over to me by the father no one knows the son but the father and no one knows the father but the son and anyone to whom the father wishes to reveal so that's also spiritual enlightenment like the the parables are written in a way where a student like myself is going to understand but to the uninitiated who are just in the modes of nature number one that's why the uh, you know the Christ uh, said these things in parables so they won't understand you know come to me so when you start coming to me that number one turns into number two but if you do not devote yourself to God you're stuck in the material mode of nature so the human living this is the demigod so the heavenly planets even if you see the idea of the heavy, heavenly planets is if man performs good actions then it's more like an hourglass 
he starts accumulating time where he could enjoy himself in this material concoction. It's no different than if he performs these ill religious acts and goes to hell. <laughs> All of this is a part of the wheel. So after man dies, his ill religious acts send him into hell, right? Hell exists also with the uh, animal plane, so that's what number six is. Number seven is the ghost, so people that die or are kept in the womb on the judgment day of the Lord. That's also in book two of Ezra. So these are the people that are dead and are just in the womb waiting the day of judgment. Number eight is the evil spirits. Influence. See, the evil spirits influence this wheel as well, but they're not a part of this human situation. Okay? That's another thing, too. The wheel is divided. You're not going to see these hells because they exist in a different realm. But man coexists more with these demigods, as you can see, because that wheel is portioned with the human uh, uh, environment here. So let's just say that's our human realm. It is also with the demigods. So that's why it's easier to commit good and get into this realm or get into the heavenly planets. But it's an hourglass. So as soon as you run out of time or finish your material enjoyment, you fall back into the wheel. You go right back to number one. And that's why the Lord in Vedic scriptures and the Bhagavad Gita says, do not devote yourself to the demigods, so idolatry, because you might get promoted to heavenly planets, but you're going to fall back here into number one. You want to devote yourself to me. Seek me. Seek only me. So that's what he's saying here too. Come to me and by practicing devotional service. So what is devotional service? It's basically hearing the correct word. So your ear holes will become drinking fountains for hearing the proper truth. <laughs> and then your eye holes will be involved in and investigating and reading scriptures. So that's another thing too. Your, your members will be more dot invested into truth, into acquiring God, or into acquiring the one. So I'll read here too how also it's very easy, the purity of God as well. So that was revealed uh, in Luke 7. Luke chapter 7. Where could I put that up here? Uh, it was the penitent woman, verse 36. So this is why as well with devotional service, we're born in the material contamination. All right? And Satan just spins this wheel. He's not the controller of it. That's why God is the controller. And he's above the material creation. He's not. That's why in the Bhagavad Gita it teaches God is never contaminated by the modes of material nature. He's never in this wheel, but he's the controller of the, all the living entities in the wheel. But Satan, this false ego, spins the wheel. But God is the controller. That's what Bhagavad Gita ultimately teaches as well. God is the supreme controller of all the living entities. He appears as all these. He appears as this, too. God is not only the controller the sustainer and maintainer, he also appears as this, but he is above it all. So that's what the immaculate conception means as well. When Jesus Christ uh, was immaculately conceived, he is still the number two. Even though he appeared in this wheel, he never was the number one. He never, ever, ever. See, that's another thing with God consciousness. When Jesus Christ came into this world, he never entangled his consciousness into this wheel, into number one. He was always the number two. So that's what God consciousness means as well. When he was an infant, he was able to speak and had his intelligence because he was never entangled in birth. He was never entangled in this wheel. He came not on his own will, and he came with not his own doctrine. So that's what that means as well. He wasn't engaged in the material modes of nature. And that's how the purity of God consciousness, so that's how sinners are saved. Sinners are redeemed. The uh, Basically, like the, the thief on the cross. And here's another example as well here too with the woman. Now I hope I, there it is, verse 36. So this is how easy basically the one, like us, so we're the sinners, right? But the one can turn into the saint without engaging. See, how are we going to get to the two? 
right? Because <laughs> it, it's it, as you can see, the two does not engage in the wheel. There's no pathway to the two. It's all invisible. So that's why the one consciousness, the invisible prayer, take no thought for your life. And following these ways immediately frees you from the wheel. It turns the saint or the sinner into the saint. And here's the penitent woman. There is a certain Pharisee who invited Jesus to dine with him. Jesus went to the Pharisee's home and reclined to eat. A woman known in the town to be a sinner learned that he was dining in the Pharisee's home. and She brought in a vase of perfumed oil and stood behind him at his feet, weeping so that her tears fell upon his feet. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissing them and perfuming them with the oil. When his host, the Pharisee, saw this, he said to himself, inside himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who that, what sort of woman this is, and what touches him, and that she's just a sinner. So that's what men think. See, men are just engaged in the material modes of nature, and not only that, but envy. See, this Pharisee was only engaged in the animals. He misjudged. He did not practice Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, do not judge. See, he did not, he is not this. Men in that Pharisee are more engaged in hatred, jealousy. So he looked upon that woman with jealousy and criticism. He, all men look at others with number one if they do not practice the number two. And then they're just engaged on how people are living their quote-unquote good life here. Oh, so he's seen that woman. She was not this. She wasn't this right here. She was more looking like this over here. Oh, that, and, and Jesus. Oh, what's he doing with these people over here? See, these one in bondage and slavery to sin. Oh, what's that? Why is Jesus letting this sinner touch him? Well, he, if he's such a prophet, if he's such a good man, he should know that that's, she's just a blatant sinner. So men are, are insane anyways, judgmental, hatred, full of the animals, full of just conditioned living souls. <laughs> they, men are more like that. So when that, that Pharisee is basically speaking through this devil, let's just put it that way, jealousy, hatred. So when men look upon that woman as a sinner, it's just basically what I'm showing you there. So that Pharisee is the devil. Let's put it that way. Oh, but to our normal sense that guy just appears as a man but in his consciousness he's adopted the wheel and who's the spinner of the wheel well it's his good old buddy Satan that's why in the doctrine of Nicodemus good old buddy G the, Satan riled up his good old buddy the Jews to perform the crucifixion because he tried to lure Jesus Christ into hell but that was the plan was the crucifixion and for Jesus to enter into that abode in the first place shake it up and to free Adam but in the scripture it says oh Satan here riled up his good old buddies the Pharisees you see and who is the controller of the Pharisees these three animals of hatred greed that's why they like their cheap seats at the synagogues I would call them the cheap seats yeah sure they like the chief ones but that's all the cheap seats buddy the enlightened ones are up here Oh, what the? <laughs> hey, <laughs> give that back. <laughs> the enlightened ones are over here. And number two. So that's us. We don't enjoy the cheap seats of the synagogues. We enjoy enlightened consciousness. While the rest of the fools are with their good old buddy, the devil. So that's a huge lesson here. Now we'll go to verse uh, 39. No, sorry, verse 40. In answer to his thoughts, Jesus said to him, Simon, I have something to propose to you. Teacher, he said, speak. Two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owned a total of 500 coins and another 50. Since neither was able to repay, he wrote off both debts. Which of, the, which of them was more grateful to him? So Simon answered, he, I presume, to whom he remitted the larger sum. And Jesus said to him, you're right. So basically, the guy that's able to forgive more. So the guy had two people in debt. One owed him 500 and the other owed him like $50. But he forgave them both. And that's the lesson here, is Jesus is telling us to look at people with forgiveness. You see that? Number one, it turns into forgiveness, love, kindness. And it, it brings you right out of that wheel of Satan. 
and then to God, number two. So that's what he's telling you here. Don't look at people with whatever, with, with number one, <laughs> right? <clears throat> and the actions that they portray, don't look at people at number one, the, the conditioned souls, engaging in three and four, enslaved to the economic advancement uh, or education or religiosity. So that's another thing there too. We don't look at everyone like that. We look at them as, Father, forgive them. That's another thing that he's saying here too. And to the one that could forgive with the greater debts, he's rewarded more in the kingdom of God. So verse 44. Turning then to the woman, he said to Simon, You see this woman? I came to your home, and you provided me with no water for my feet. Now he's talking to his disciple. She washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since I entered this place. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with perfume. And I tell you, that is why her many sins are forgiven. So that's why this number one here, even though people are engaged in greed, violence, hatred, envy, and then they look at the number three and then they go to number four. Yes, even though they do those things, right? That's why if even though her sins are many, we can go right to that number two. We can go right to that number two. Even though her sins are many, right? Because of her great love that she showed for the master and crying and wiping her, her, her tears with her hair off his feet and, and, and giving him some perfume, anything, even the little that she had. That's another lesson before here too. The little that you have, that's why it's forgiven greatly or much is poured out to you. You'll be a better servant. But because of her great love, little is forgiven the one those love is small and he said to her then your sins are forgiven at which his fellow guests began to ask among themselves who is that that he can forgive sins meanwhile he said to the woman your faith has been your salvation now go in peace that's why the scholars don't understand number one and number two because faith that's the whole idea here with faith her faith has made her whole even though she was clothed in sin right and the other people judged her as sinful you see they judged her as the contaminated consciousness and that's just their good old buddy the devil spinning that wheel of contaminated consciousness but because she showed mercy to the master and by faith the master gave her devotional service she was she had her she, no more sins even though your sins are scholared, ye be as white as snow. So I'll talk more about uh, the Bhagavad Gita now, more about this one, because it's a very quick dispensation. Now, this is chapter 7. We're studying more about number 2. <laughs> uh, that wheel's okay. That wheel's okay. This wheel is pretty cool as well, so we'll look at that. It's a really pretty wheel. The wheels have advanced over time, too, as well. So there are different versions of this wheel. And I'll try to get the best close-up shot for that too as well. So you guys at home can see. Uh, but either way, the pictures look a lot better. There's much more detail. The wheels changed in this one over here. As you can see, the human world in the other one. Well, I noticed that right off the bat. If you guys didn't. And there's only three dudes here in the middle. <laughs> this wheel's changed. You see, we'll, we'll, we'll do a little dispensation on the wheel here. But, yeah, this wheel's changed and the other one isn't. You can see that right there. Especially this top part here, number nine. See, the demigods and this on the other wheel were together. The demigods here and the human beings are together. So that's a different dispensation. And what that means is an age has changed where uh, demigods were no longer with man. And that's what it explains there too in the Bhagavad Gita. That well, it's a deep, very deep explanation actually, but that is you could say our age, where the spiritual influence or the demigods are no longer with the human beings. This is more like the age of Kali. So this is what happened when darkness came upon mankind. Uh, this what happened when the Christ said, "Oh, I wish I could grab that verse, but I know what he says." He's like, you can remove one devil 
and then make room for seven more devils to come. And so it will be with this age. And what that means is this age is going to get more dark, more evil. And the influence of this good or heavenly realm has been cut off from the human beings. So that's what this wheel represents as well, too. The human beings have been cut off from the spiritual kingdom. So that's what this wheel represents. And this wheel represents and depicts, like you could say, the age after the Christ. So this could be like a revisit or a revised version of the wheel. Because the, like I'm trying to say, this other wheel in, incorporated the demigods with the human beings. And the Bhagavad Gita says, yes, this is accurate. But after the dark age, see when the Christ said seven more devils will come, the, the good influence, like the demigods, left this plane. And that's what it says in the Bhagavad Gita as well. So this wheel is very accurate when it depicts that. That the human beings are cut off from the spiritual world, even after the Christ said that. So we'll get in. You can go right to number two, as it says in the, in the other wheel here. Right from knowing me, you could avoid this catastrophe and it's got different animals so this is more the enlightened one it's got the swan the snake and i think something else i don't know what that is a bull or something or a pig and this represents more of man's good traits so this wheel was contaminated in the prior age but man got a little bit more good because he got cut off from the spiritual realms that's what i understand from the animals changing so there's more good traits that came about in this age and the back of his consciousness. But he lost, apparently, a mode of living. So that's what the three represent here. There is four modes of living. So the caste systems before, there was four back in India. And then when that caste system faded away and moved more to the Orientals, there was only three modes of, you could say, uh, economic or, or human modes of living. You know, uh, uh, basically like uh, economic advancement and had like uh, education and then ultimately religious life so before it had four now at this age it has three and man's not so contaminated but he's still in this wheel that ultimately is spun by Satan but by knowing me see this is what the supreme person says just by knowing me, you're going to avoid these other realms. We're not, see, by knowing me, we're not in the realms of the demigods, worshipping demigods. We're not in it. That's why we're just interested in the one consciousness, following the way to the word. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Israel, Mark 12, oh, there's only one God. <laughs> and we're not interested in this wheel of anything else but enlightenment, as you see, it's still depicted there, and also with that enlightening head. That's what that means of old. Anyways, so I shall now declare to you the full knowledge, both phenomenal and numinous. This being known, nothing further shall remain known to you. Out of many thousands of young men, one may endeavor for perfection. So to get out of this wheel, one may want to get out of this wheel. So that's what he's saying as well, too. Not that many people endeavor these days for God consciousness. No, they would rather stay in this wheel and want a little bit of more sense gratification, especially just over here with this aspect of consciousness. Just sex. <laughs> Some other girl just sitting there wanting it. That's just how it is these days. You got a lot of girls with their cell phones propping themselves up. That's, you know what, that's just a mode of living. We see some girl there, right? She's just sitting on the beach or whatever. But you could just put our modern clip of just some girl, you know, uh, taking a selfie. No different. You know, people are just more interested. And if you think God is interested in anything in this wheel, well, guess again. That's why take no thought and acknowledge me in all thy ways, and I will give you the rest. God will still provide for you because you're just in this wheel, but, as you can see, God is above this wheel. And if you keep your mind on me, that's the process of prayer. So that's what gets us out and into the state of perfection with God. So, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. 
See, all this comprise the wheel, Satan, you could say. All of these consist of eight are my separated material energies. So what he's saying here is this is God and this wheel are still his. Remember, God is the controller, but this is like his separate illusionary energy. It is still him. It is still God, right? That's what that statement is. These things, they're just enjoying the inferior byproducts of the Lord's illusionary energy. And as you can see, the Lord is above that. That's what also that verse means as well. He comprises the living entities who are exploiting these material inferior nature. Even the Lord says this is his inferior nature. <laughs> this wheel. That's why the process of liberation is easily obtainable. And you get out of that wheel very quickly. All created beings have their source in these two natures. All of that is material and all that is spiritual in this world. Know for certain that I am both and the origin and disillusion. So God is everything, the origin of all this. He's the controller and the dissolution of it as well. So... O oh, conqueror of wealth, <laughs> there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. O oh, son of Kunti, I am the taste of water, the light of the sun and the moon, the syllable Om in Vedic mantras. I am the sound and ether and ability in man. So he has all these things, but spiritual. That's why understanding this wheel. He is all these things, but yet above it and not affected by it. And that is our state. Our image and likeness is also that as well. Man is spiritual in the image and likeness of God. So again, above that wheel. He says, text 11, I am the strength of the strong, devoid of passion and desire. I am sex life, which is not contrary to religious principles. O Lord of brothos. <laughs> now that all states of being, be they goodness, passion, or ignorance, be they in this wheel, Right? In this three mode of material nature, doesn't matter what it is, are manifested by my energy. I am, in one sense, everything, but I am independent. See, this independence, he, this enlightened consciousness that we come into contact to and are like an umbrella under is independent. See, that's why the scripture is so important because this wheel is entirely accurate to this chapter. <laughs> this entire chapter I am not under the modes of material nature for they on contrary are within me so all things are within this number two within God in the enlightened consciousness deluded by the three modes goodness passion and ignorance the whole world does not know me who am who is above the modes and inexhaustible so remember God is above these modes and these modes perish and, and make the entities die. That's why God is inexhaustible and eternal. So another thing there too about God. This divine energy of mind, consisting of three modes of material nature, is difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross it. So that's why that, again, the one turns into the two. If they surrender unto the Lord, then that's how easy. That's why that step is there. The one turns into the two, and then you're surrendered unto God. So that perfectly uh, puts that text 14 right into context. Those miscreants who are grossly foolish, who are lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake of the aesthetic nature of demons, do not surrender. So those people that don't follow God. Oh, best among bratas. Four kinds of pious men begin to render devotional service unto me. The distressed, the desire of wealth, the inquisitive, and he who is searching for knowledge of the absolute. Of these, the one who is in full knowledge and who is always engaged in pure devotional service is best. For I am dear to him and he is dear to me. All these devotees are undoubtedly magnanimous souls. But he who is situated in knowledge of me, I consider to be just like my own self. Being engaged in my transcendental service, he is sure to attain me, the highest and most perfect goal. So that's what that number two is.
God's natures, but their own natures of evil, <laughs> hatred, envy, jealousy. And they end up worshipping idolatry just to try to get something from this wheel, especially that right there. That's what man's really more interested in. <laughs> that outer part of the wheel right there. <laughs> and this. <laughs> he just wants two things out of this wheel. And oh yeah, he's got to eat a little bit here too. But that's it. Just three things. <laughs> so he worships Danny gods, right? For these three things. <laughs> that's why men with learned knowledge, they have to understand that it's all an illusion on this wheel. Everything in man's actions is in darkness. But God is the supreme controller of that darkness. Even though Satan, this darkness, false ego is spinning the wheel of actions, right? Yeah, that's what God is getting us out of. That's why he says matter is an illusion. Because he's the only, number two, he's the only consciousness. So men with lesser intelligence devote their actions here just for this. But it's still in the realm of the illusion. It doesn't matter if they devote themselves to demigods. So at the end of the day, they can go to heaven or hell. It's still in the realm of the illusion. And God takes us into his kingdom. <laughs> That's what that piece of scripture means as well. They're just going to get covered. It don't matter to God. <laughs> Therefore, they don't know that I'm unborn. See, that's what number two is as well. He's unborn to the wheel. It's not manifest. Oh, sky on a brato, oh, conqueror of foe. All living entities are born into delusion. Bewilderment and duality has arisen from desire and hate. Yes, desire and hatred. That's why that original wheel <laughs> is more accurate than the revised wheel. <laughs> See these these spiritual geniuses here, yeah. All like text twenty eight is text twenty seven. Sorry, this do this nature is all from desire and hatred. So the supreme person is correct. That's why we don't want to be wise guys and start messing around with doctrines and making new wheels and stuff like that. We'll just stick to the original here, and that's the more man's just hatred envy jealousy consciousness that's why this is more the original so that's what was given to them in the original doctrine in the first place it's more into what people actually are anyways hatred jealousy anger and they don't have any love for the supreme or at least the one consciousness principle so persons who have acted piously in pre previous lives and in this life and whose sinful actions are completely eradicated and are freed from the dualities of delusion and they engage themselves in my service with determination intelligent persons are ever ende endeavoring for liberation from old age and death and take refuge in me in devotional service they're actually brahmins wise men because they entirely know everything about the transcendental activities those in full consciousness of me know who i am the supreme lord to be the governing principle of the material manifestation see he's the governor he controls everything. The demigods, Satan, the wheel. He is everything. The controller. So last, or sorry, text 29 is very important. Or even, sorry, the last text 30. To be the governing principle of all of it. The manifestation, the wheel, the demigods, all the methods of sacrifice, all the methods of prior engagements. You can understand and know me to the supreme personality of Godhead, the absolute truth even at time of death. So 1 John verse 2. So 1 John chapter 2 verse 15. Have no love for the world, nor the things that the world affords. If anyone loves the world, the Father's love has no place in him. For nothing that the world affords comes from the Father. As you can see, nothing. As you see, if you love this world, it, it, it's God's already above it. <laughs> That's very important. Carnal allurements. Oh, this is a big time carnal allurement right here. Getting stuck in that material mode of nature, especially girls here, just flopping them out here. Oh, they did that back in the day. Don't you think that girls now doing those selfies is anything new these days? Oh, they're flopping it out right there. That's why wise men knew just to take a hike, buddy. See that guy right there? He's just getting away from that one. That's why that's the next step. And then, yeah, you'll look like a fool anyways. Maybe get drunk hang out with the monkeys, go on a fishing trip, 
get a house, and then you're right back with a girl again. And it all just goes over the crap all over again. Because then you get another girl, maybe. You sit down, you're happy, make a friend, make some food, and then you're back doing it again. See, this, is, this end of the wheel right here is where most living entities fall. Because those are carnal allurements, enticements of the eye. The empty life show. All of these are just from the world. Two people doing that are just engaged in number one anyways. Hatred, lust. See, that's why lust, that's why hatred, and that's why relationships go sour. Because they're not in God in the first place.